Yeah, I grew up here in Baltimore, Maryland. So um, I lived uh, more in the city when I was between the age of one to four. Middle school in a nearby area that, that was Subbrook Middle Magnet School. Somewhat like a private school, but you had to audition to get in. It was kind of like a public school. Um, then after I was done there, I went to a nearby uh, high school. And then from there, uh, Springfield. <laughs> I was doing gymnastics ever since the age of, uh, I think since second grade. So I think that was age of like six or seven. I can't remember. Um, but I started doing it since second grade. And by the time I was in high school, I was really good at it. So they, my parents was like, you could do this in college. And at the time I was like, Ugh. <laughs> I don't know about that. And then we started applying. And then once I went to Springfield, I realized, okay, well, I'm doing it here. I'd say it was, was pretty fun. Um, Definitely enjoyed being with the teammates and stuff like that. They, they were really good at pushing and then pushing them was kind of fun. So, you know, going to meets and stuff like that was like, uh, how would I put it? Kind of like felt like, you know, you know, leading an army to battle or something like that. It was just kind of like fun. And I, in the gym, you know, I would always, I think in the beginning, I was kind of like a shy because when I was my first year, I was always trying to like, um, match up to everybody else because like the you had to look up to the the alumni and the um the upperclassmen so I was always like okay I want to be able to you guys and then like after you know a year a year or two flies by you're like where am I at and then now you're the upperclassmen so now everyone else is looking at you so it's like uh oh <laughs> leadership um qualities responsibility and maturity that fall a long way because gymnastics is not an easy sport and for one thing, I've always tried to maintain composure, trying to maintain, maintain that maturity. So I chose graphic design. Yeah, I chose graphic design um, due to me always being creative when I was a kid. I was like drawing and creating things. Sometimes I like creating things out of nothing. So it's kind of a quality we have as a graphic designer. Someone will come to us with a problem or to look for a design. And you got to take whatever concept they have in their head and turn it into art so because I was always used to doing that I decided I'd do that so high school I actually um, applied to be in the design program which is for like the next three years because you're going as a freshman you have three more years left so you do three years of that and then by the time I went to college I realized I should just continue it my sophomore year and then ever since then I've just been designing and drawing stuff on the side or freelancing ever since then. Right now I am still freelancing graphic design so every so often I will be doing a logo or a design for someone uh, for a client and at the same time I'm also still drawing more children's books. So he it's a form of an autobiography but at the same time it's not. <laughs> so it's not it's not to the bone, but it's more like, this is kind of what it would have been like, but with like a fantasy sprinkles on it, you know? Okay. <laughs> so Marcus is basically me as a kid, but in this crazy wacky world. And I didn't really want to use my name because I felt like that'd be a little too generic. So I wanted something that kind of like rings, something that kind of like stuck. So I gave him the name Marcus and he's, we both have like the same fro, you know, same afro and everything, but it's uh, completely different. And it's uh, basically about, you know, that, uh, that hyperactive or overactive imagination side about me and how I dealt with it when I was a kid. And I wanted to offer to people or to children who have never, who had the same issue, like a way that they can actually deal with it versus um, just either trying to hide it or just not really caring about what they do with it because you know everything needs a form of discipline to a certain point so throughout the story he kind of learns how it's not a bad thing but you got to be careful about what you do with it so he kind of learns how to use it responsibly I'd say my first two would definitely be my parents number for uh for you know, number one because your parents are always going to try to be your your moral support um and then i would say those teachers that i came along the way the ones that actually put up with me and say, you know what, you're not that bad of a kid. You just got X and X and X. But other than that, I would say it is those, or really to start off saying it is, when you really come into this world, no one really gives you like a blueprint or like no one really gives you 
a map about what is it you're supposed to be, what is it you're supposed to exactly do. You either just do that by listening to everyone else or you just feel it and then you go by it. So it's kind of hard sometimes if you're going for something and you are unsure if that's something you're supposed to be doing. So by having someone important to you to tell you that whatever it is that you're going to do, they believe in you regardless. Because I didn't want um, like a, a part in the story where he's doing something and then someone comes in like, I don't think you really should be doing this because he wouldn't be this far if he wasn't doing it. So I wanted to have some that moral support to say like, whatever it is you're basically doing, you got this. Cause like the parent comes in, he doesn't question what he's doing. He doesn't, you know, argue with it. He's just like, whatever it is that you're doing, don't give up on doing it. And I believe in you. So in the end, it's a fixing it. So that was kind of like the, the biggest point right there. Cause we all mm -hmm. need that. Most definitely was a uh, real close teammates that I've had do that. Um, coaches definitely. And, and sometimes outside sources, you know, uh, kids I've seen around uh, campus, they'll, they'll do that a lot. Sometimes they'll know if I'm either having like a rough time or something's just not right. They're like, yeah, you, you got it. Don't you worry about it. But sometimes it was kind of like, you ain't got a choice. <laughs> Diversity, I think it's important, especially when I um, implement that within my uh, book. It's, it's important because I think a lot of the times we as a society kind of portray um, you know, African Americans as, you know, the least of these. And most of us are still trying to get to that point where it's equality, you know, and some of us feel as over there, some of us feel as though we're far from it. Um, but implementing that in, it allows people to see a world where the differences don't matter much. It is just life, you know, it's equality. There is no, you're doing this because you're this color, or you can't do this because you're that color. It's like, Here's the main character, he's black, but in my mind, he could be white, but he's black and there's no difference. You know, there's, there's no difference. I don't want people to see it as, um, oh, this is like a, a black only book because I, I see those out there. You know, there's people who, who don't like the fact that, they're, um, that there aren't enough diverse books out there and then they make an all black book. <laughs> so I feel like that's just the whole other side of the spectrum. I kind of wanted to make an in-between. Mm -hmm. where you have best of both worlds, you have all different kinds of races in it, it and it doesn't matter. Everyone's operating like we're human beings, you know? So I kind of wanted to push that agenda a little bit. The way it originated, it was actually, actually kind of funny. Um, I think this was during the time of intercession. This is when um, we, is when the gymnasts and whatever the team, we have to stay on campus where everybody goes home and chillaxes in the month of January. So we're here sitting here and I'm bored. And I'm like, Christian, um, he's another person. He's, he's still on the team now, but um, yeah. So while I was on the team, I was like, Christian, um, I'm bored. And I was like, yo, what if I made, because I was going to illustrate and I said, what if I made a children's book in a month just for fun? It was going to be like a real short one. And he was like, yeah, go for it. And I was like, yeah. So then it was all talk. And then one day I just sat there and started researching like how to like, books work you know like how do you really make one and then I started understanding and I was like oh so then I started to write down this little stupid story and at first his, it well, actually wasn't Marvelous Marcus it was it was Bad Brad <laughs> that's how it that's how it actually started it was Bad Brad it was about this kid who did horrible stuff and then it was like the same concept but it was worse it was a lot worse <laughs> and then it would have um and then towards the end he starts learning why he shouldn't do it but I felt that was a little too harsh. Like, I don't think parents want to pick up that book and see a kid just destroying the house and breaking stuff intentionally. So that had to change. And then when I was talking to Christian about it, I started to um, get new ideas. So, okay, what if it's just a bunch of small, short adventures? And I, it, it, if I could remember, it was like a list. We only have, there's only four in the book, but there was like a list of different outcomes and stuff that could have happened and we just chose like the best four. And once I got into it, I started storyboarding and then I later, I mean, long story short, I didn't think I'd be storyboarding for that long, but storyboarding took like two months. And then afterwards I'm like, I gotta draw this, like I have to draw this. And then I started drawing it and I predicted I'd be done by like, cause this, I started in late January, so I thought I'd be done by like, 
March, but then after the whole Corona and all that stuff blew over, it took a while. Then the motivation was kind of like disappearing. And then once we all got sent home, I said, you know what? I got nothing else better to do. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this book out. <laughs> so that's kind of how I like it ended up happening. So, and the process is kind of like, um, I will storyboard most of it. Um, might not always have the finishing part about it, but I normally will figure that out later. And then I will draw all of the main characters first before I do visuals, before I do background, before I do any of that. I draw all of that first, and then I draw each character individually because I, I like to pay attention to detail. So each character will have specific kinds of details, and then I will include everything and put it all together like a sandwich, I guess. <laughs> when drawing, it'll start off with me sketching it first. I know exactly how the characters are going, because I have a specific style for them. So I know exactly how the characters are going to look, but I have to start off with a concept first. So it's kind of like, um, if I'm going to draw a frying pan, I know what style I'm going to draw the frying pan in, but I would like to draw on paper first. Okay, it's going to be this big, the handle's going to be that small, and then I'll throw it on the computer and make sure. So it's kind of like it goes through uh, beginning stage first. Because I don't want to like freestyle on the computer and then have to do that three times over just in case I mess something up. Teachers would like give me either like papers or, you know, simple things. And I would probably like if they gave me a paper clip, I turn it into like a mini bow and arrow just for fun <laughs> or something interesting. If they give me masking tape, I'll probably turn that into, uh, there were multiple times when I would take the masking tape and I'd roll it up and I'd turn it into like this uh, action figure or a ninja. My, my, the ones I like doing the most like military like uh, <laughs> characters and they would actually have like a, a vest and holsters and all that other really cool stuff. Um, it's crazy because by the time I was like, it would be like later on the week, there'd be figurines all over the house, like all in my room somewhere. <laughs> I think there, I don't think there's any of them left, but <laughs> they'd be all over the place. They'd have their own houses, they have their own cars. Um, there was one, I think I, I got real in depth with it. It had, um, it had like a, it was like a working car and the wheels moved. It had like an engine on the inside. You could actually lift the hood open and close it. Oh my up. gosh. Yeah. So um, just to give you like a good visual of it, um, recently I had a sculpture project with one of my, um, it's one of the classes before I graduated and I had to make something out of uh he gave options but I said could I just make something from like scratch so I wanted to challenge myself so I made a samurai basically out of just nothing but cardboard it was kind of like the same kid very hyperactive kid thought differently um but unfortunately that one it kind of made the kid look kind of evil <laughs> and he thought it was funny but um it was a part of those people who like have kids who are overactive and all they do is like go sit in time out and yell at them and stuff like that. So we can relate to that. And that's kind of resort sometimes as a, uh, a negative feeling about it because we don't actually think that we're doing something wrong, depending on what it is, because I'm not going to say we don't do things wrong, but there are times where we don't feel like we're doing something wrong. We're just like, oh, what's this? Let's, let's see how far we can explore into this. And then it turns out we're messing up the couch. <laughs> you know, we don't even feel like we're doing that. Um, but in that one, it was like, I'm just a bunch of like yelling, stuff like that. So I thought um, that also inspired the new book a little bit because I took the whole, um, like the whole parenting part and I kind of like twisted it a little bit. So it was more encouraging versus scolding. And there were times where, you know, you have the characters get yelled at, but it was more by another character of the same caliber, you know, another little kid versus like an adult. Adult would always come in and, you know, since they're the more mature ones, they'd be like, well, this is what's going on. This is what you need to do, you know, just do that. And I kind of wanted it to be in that kind of form, you know, something that's more calm versus uh, angry. <laughs> I don't really like to get too many, uh, too many details, but that one is more about like personal growth. So, um, and it can really apply to like anybody because, you know, we, we've always been that kid where we come back to school and everyone has something that you don't. <laughs>
So it's it's kind of about learning how to deal with that or more of, you know, how do you personally um, cope with, I don't want to say too much without spilling the beans. Because <laughs> if I literally say one thing, it'll spill the whole beans for it. Okay. I started off um, as an ebook. I wasn't really sure how to do any of that stuff. So I started off as an ebook and I had a few pre-orders to the ebook and I, some people are every so often are still on buying it. But uh people were asking if they could have it physically because most people didn't want to download or go buy a, an ipad and i didn't know i thought in my head because i don't read books as much i thought we already migrated to ebooks already but ebooks is more like that backup if you don't have a book or if you're on the road you might want to read something for your kid you know i didn't think it was a i thought it was full flesh and it wasn't so after that i had to go back in another month and take all the things that i drew and basically turn them up long side because the dimensions that I had earlier weren't offered as a, as a hardback or a paperback. So I had to turn it long ways and then republish it so that they can have it as a paperback. I, my biggest advice for someone who wanted to have a creative project, um, depending on whatever it is, any, any form of caliber, um, I would say for them to first start off with the, an idea, and even if it sounds stupid, don't quit on it until it's finished for you then to determine if it was stupid or not. Because there's been a lot of times where I'll be halfway through the book and I'm like, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> this is stupid. Like uh, there, there were times, I think I was, I don't I remember which page it was, but I think it was towards the end and I'm drawing the machine. I'm like, this looks dumb. So I'm gonna think this is dumb. <laughs> but you can't, you can't speak for it if it's not finished yet. So it doesn't matter what the project may be. It could be really stupid or it could be extremely smart, but you'd have to see it all the way through. You can't just stop midway or stop before you even start because you'll never know what it could have done if you never did it. To be talking with the kids and the parents, one thing I want them to take away from the story is, it's more for the kids and then more, for, more a little bit for the parents, but more of self-awareness. You know, because in the book, he, he starts to learn how to deal with that. I think a lot of people, I think, that's a lot of uh, one of our biggest problems, I guess, in society now. We don't have too much, uh oh, PC is dying. <laughs> we don't have too much uh, self awareness, and we will tend to miss important things because of that. So, I want to, I really, that's like the biggest thing I want them to take away from this kind of novel or this kind of book. The style of it is uh, it's quite, it's quite funny. Um, story behind the style is I've always been able to, uh, when I first started graphic design, I never had a style, I never had a, uh, my way of doing things I would just if you taught it to me I got it like that like I'll just mimic it or now or I'll make it a little bit better but I was never something raw from like me never had that um so I was kind of like frustrated so one day I said I'm just gonna develop something I'm gonna fix something and then I started drawing down ideas and then I came up with it and then I when I finished it I called it a studio because you know my company name was like Staffix and it was like it was basically a doodle so I called it a studio that's, that's what these uh these characters are called they're called studios so the concept is like they're these uh heavily stroked characters with no mouth and I intentionally do not have a mouth on them because I believe actions speak louder than words so the fact that I'm able to get the message across even if the words aren't there is kind of like the the best part about it and they don't have any mouth it's kind of like a, it gives you that Hello Kitty vibe, you know, Hello Kitty that has no mouth, she just has like a nose and like whiskers. So that's kind of like the concept behind them. Attributes of gymnastics carrying over into this uh, aspect of work in graph design. Um, specifically, the uh, practice does make perfect. I, like there is a form of talent in it, but I wouldn't say that my designs always look this good. I, and if it looks good now, it can look a lot better and that's something I learned in gymnastics even if you think it's you know because that was one thing you should always I used to always see um could be teammates could be gymnasts or whatever people I competed with I could see how they could be a lot better and I could see how I could be a lot better but there's times where people would just take what they have and say that's it and I learned in gymnastics like even if that's it it can always be better it can always be better you can always make it better um so when it comes to graphic design we I don't get satisfied with if I make something and it looks good and someone says it looks great, I don't really get satisfied at that point. 
I got to make it look better than that. And if I can make that my norm, then, you know, then I don't have to worry as much. But at the same time, even until that point, it can still look better. And there is there is no corner cutting at all. Like there's different techniques you can use to speed up time, but there's, there's no corner cutting. So, and that, that's one thing I've definitely learned through gymnastics. You don't, there's no cutting corners. Everything is hard work until it becomes easy. I think I think the biggest thing is, um, especially for uh, you know, side that we have, um, and I would say sometimes maybe it's like I mean I can't express uh, that too much about it, but I would say sometimes it's uh, it's like a, a negative thing because I think most of us when we go to school it is just you know sit down and follow directions. There's not really room for individuality, so then a lot of people um, become very external and later on in life versus internal. So they stop thinking about the things that made them them. And then they'll say, you know, I'm different because it got maybe a red shirt on today, <laughs> you know? And they're all, you know, acting the exact same. So it's always like, we don't really, um, unless it becomes something, you know, of value or something like we can say, oh my gosh, that's really cool. We kind of take that level of individuality and kind of like, like weird faces at it, you know? And when you see that one kid in class, it's like, he could be like real creative. He could be having something crazy going on in his head. You know, he could have like the, you know, cure to cancer. But we're just looking at him like, why can't he sit still? You know, like, why is he jumping like that? You know, it, it's it's stuff like that. So I think some people don't get to, you know, like a plant, you need, you need like soil water care in order to grow. And then when you take those things away, it's like, how do you get to grow that part about you? So it's, you definitely need people, or at least maybe one person that's going to still understand you and push you to that point to keep growing.